people in the, the industrial society. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know if he liked what it was doing to morality. But he actually wrote the, the book Hard Times was against all of that statistical and make your workers put out more output for... Everything he wrote was... Is this anti-capitalist though? Is this particular story anti-capitalist? Yeah. There's no the workhouses. They don't see he doesn't see well, actually he does mention Pratchett uh, mentions that this this meal is because they're due to my employer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that's mm -hmm. actually a Wait, I'm sorry, he mentions what? He thinks the he founder of the CBS. Yeah. Um, so in a way, that's giving credit to capitalism. Well, yeah, that's I would, I would, I would disagree with that because that's juxtaposed against the wife's reaction. See, yeah, but to as long as it's in there, I think it's it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. 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 It can be even in, it can be balanced, but it's in there. I think, I think, I think the issue would be more with the. What, what Dickens would probably perceive as the avarice, the greed coming along from having that type of a situation. Not necessarily the industry itself, but the way that the people were treated. What about the shopkeepers? How are they? What's Dickens' view of the shopkeepers? What's the odds the narrator? How, how are they shown? Maybe turkey? Mm, yeah, but yeah, but what else? Cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I, I can think of the movies, and in the movies, that you know, all, all the representations seem to have the people scenes of being in shops and what people are doing in the shops, but I don't remember so much of that in the book, so okay, what about, you're going to have to help me remember. Okay, there's two things. One I'll probably forget, but um, I already said this, I mean, uh, the poulterers' shops were still half open and the fruiterers were radiant in their glory. There were great, round, pot-bellied baskets of chestnuts shaped like waistcoats of jolly old gentlemen lolling at the doors and tumbling out into the street in their apoplectic opulence. There were ruddy, brown-faced, broad-girthed Spanish onions shining in the fatness of their growth like Spanish friars and winking from their shelves in wanton slyness at the girls as they went by and glanced demurely at the hung-up mistletoe. There were pears and apples clustered high in blooming pyramids. There were bunches of grapes made in the shopkeeper's benevolence to dangle from conspicuous hooks that people's mouths might water gratis as they passed. There were piles of filberts, messy and brown, recalling in their fragrance ancient walks among the woods and pleasant shufflings through the ankle-deep withered leaves. Dickens was the first booty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's a central market. It's a central market. It's fabulous. <laughs>